Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to give an example of something which I'll try to prove is a group. Okay, so the set is all reals except what? Hmm? Negative one. Negative one. And the binary operation sends uh, two real numbers x and y to x plus y plus xy, where this plus is just usual addition of real numbers and the xy is just usual multiplication. Okay, that's why I'm using star for the group operation. So it doesn't confuse with the usual addition and multiplication. Okay, so what's 2 star 3? 2, 1, 2, 5, 6, 11. 11. Okay, good. We know the operation. Okay, now the first thing we want to check is, does this give a binary operation from G cross G to G? Which is the same as checking closure. Okay, so what do you need to check for that? Well, it's obvious if you put in real numbers, you'll get a real number out. So what do we really need to check? To show it's closed. What could be the problem? It can be negative one. Can be negative one. So we have to make sure that problem doesn't exist. Right? So we want to check that x star y is negative one would force x equal negative one. So x plus y plus x y equals minus one should imply that either x or y is already negative 1, right? Mm -hmm. That would mean that if you start with things which are not negative 1, this is what we want to show. So if you start with things which are not negative 1, then you cannot get negative 1. Okay, let's do this. So x plus y plus xy is negative 1. Well, let's bring everything to one side. Now, can you factorize the left side? The left side? Mm -hmm. X times Y plus 1 times plus Y plus Oh, X plus 1 times Y plus 1. Is it? Yeah, actually all of these are both here, so you don't really need it. Yeah, X plus 1 times Y plus 1 is 0, which is, if and only if what? x equals to 0 or no. y equals, oh, x equals to negative 1 or y equals to negative 1. Okay, so we've done it, right? We've proved it. Right? Yeah. Okay, good. So we've shown now that the operation is well defined from g cross g to g. Early it was just an operation from r cross r to r, but now we've shown that if you exclude minus 1 from the inputs, then minus 1 couldn't appear in the outputs. Okay, associativity. Well, can you check associativity for uh, all x, y, z, would that be practical? Since it's defined. So, so you obviously cannot plug in all, all pairs, all triples of real numbers, right? Because there's infinitely many of them. So what do you do? How do you check associativity? You use the definition. You, you just use the algebraic definition and you try to formally simplify it. Okay? So we want to show, I'll just use x, y, z. Uh, though in the earlier definition I use A, B, C, it doesn't matter what symbols I use. So just for variety, I'll call them. I'll use X, Y, Z. So what do we want to show? We want to show that X star Y star Z equals X star Y star Z. Right? For all X, Y, Z, and G. And that's what we want to show. Right? Let's take the left side and simplify it. So x star y star z is what? Well, what's x star y? So what do we actually do? We're trying to first calculate x star y and then we start that with z. What's x star y? x plus y plus x y. Okay, and now we start with z. Now you went next round of simplification. Now this whole thing is your first input and this thing is your second input, right? So this whole thing is your first input. So what will it be? x plus y plus x y plus z plus x z plus y z y. Let me just try to come with a more step, right? Time c. Okay. Now, if I just open and uh, and rearrange them, I'll get x plus y plus z. Right? I brought the z here. Plus x y plus x, z plus y, z plus, what's the last term? 
X Y Z. X Y Z. Okay. Now let's try X star Y star Z. What's this? So you have to do the Y star Z first. So you get X star. Y plus Z plus Y Z. Okay. Now. So again, we, we start with an x plus y plus z. Mm -hmm. Then you you still have x y, x z, and y z. You'll have all three of the double products, mm -hmm. and you'll have one of the triple products. Okay, so these are the same. Okay, so that proves associativity, right? Mm -hmm. So we didn't check it for every triple separately. We just used the algebraic expression to check it formally. So we didn't actually use that they are not minus one. So actually you could have defined the star on all reals and it could still be associative. Now before we go on to identity element, let's make a bonus observation, which will make this, you know, you just help you save a little bit of effort here. What's the extra observation? What, what's the additional way in which this operation is nice? Symmetric. Symmetric, so it's commutative, right? Okay, because it's symmetric, right? Formally, what you're saying is, if you did y star x, you'd get the same expression, right? Because remember, addition and multiplication in real numbers is commutative, okay? Because expression is symmetric in x and y. So now to find identity and inverses, we just need to find one-sided identities and one-sided inverses. Okay, now what is the identity element? So let's just try to solve x star e equals x, right? Remember now we just need to do what? We just need to check one sided identity because it's already symmetric. Okay, so what does that give us? For, so we are solving it for e as an identity in x. So what do I mean by that? Hmm? You just solve it. You just solve it, but you treat x could be anything. So this should be true for all x. You have to find an e such that this is true for all x, not equal to minus 1. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so what do you get? You get x plus e plus xc equals x. Now we have to do some algebraic manipulation. The x and x cancel. So what do you get? E times 1 plus x. And in fact, this is both ways. So what happens now? We know that x is not minus 1, right? So for what e is this true whenever x is not minus 1? So by the so the first thing we want to say that e is 0 or 1 plus x is 0. But we know this case never occurs, okay? Right? Mm -hmm. And now actually the, the implication goes both ways, right? If E is 0, then this is true, this is true. So, so it's actually we've shown that this is the identity element, 0. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, now I just want to explain why I, why, why I emphasize the, that we have two-sided things. The importance is, I mean, this two-way implications. The reason is that if I just put one way implication signs, I would get E is zero, but then I would have to check again that that satisfies the condition, right? Mm -hmm. Because what I want is I want a value of E which satisfies this. If I put the implication sign only one direction, then it wouldn't be clear that this satisfies that. I would have to check that again. But since I put them both directions, it's clear that this already satisfies this. So the identity element is zero. zero. Okay. Now the inverse elements. So, so again, we want to find, uh, so you have to solve x star y is 0 for y in terms of x. Okay? 
and you'll get an expression for y in terms of x. You'll get a formula for y in terms of x, and you have to check that formula actually works. Okay, so what do we have to solve? x plus y plus xy equals 0. Okay, so solve that. x plus y, 1 plus x equals 0. y times 1 plus x equals what? Negative x. Negative x. y equals negative. This is all here? Over 1 plus x. Now, now this step we have to be a little careful. Okay? So, how can you bring this in the denominator? What are you using? We will have negative 1. Yeah, so using x not equal to negative 1. Now, the other thing you want to check is you want to check that the answer also isn't negative 1, right? Oh, by the way, I should have checked that here also. Also note that 0 is not equal. For the identity element also, I would have to check that it's in the set, right? Mm -hmm. So, I have to check that 0 is not equal to negative 1. There wasn't anything to check though, but I should have noted it. Okay, now I do need to check uh, one more thing. That is this y that I got here is not minus 1. The answer I got here is not minus 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's, you can you can just check it algebraically. If minus one were this, then then you would get one equals zero. Uh, y not equal to minus one uh, because that would force would give uh, minus one equals minus x over one plus x. Which would imply if I if you just moved everything up, you cancel, you'll get zero equals one. Okay, so y is not minus one, and therefore everything has an inverse in G. Now, now because I put these two-way implication signs, you actually can conclude that this actually is the inverse. So good. So we've shown associativity, identity element, and inverses, but we also showed something a bonus, right? We showed commutativity. So this actually is a what kind of group? Okay, so G is an abelian group. Okay, now uh, this is act there's actually a deeper reason why why this formula works. It looks like a very mysterious formula, right? Why would this be a group? And but but there's a reason, but we cannot go into that right now. So stop here.